Okay, so we're going to talk about Faraday coefficients in this video. This is what chemists use to determine the electrochemical selectivity of a reaction. So a reaction where you have multiple products that could be generated, a lot of reactions do. What is the selectivity? And the way that they define this um, is in terms uh, of basically an electron yield. So we can define this as moles product generated, whatever product we want. So if we're talking about product number one, hydrogen gas, for example, it would have a Faraday coefficient if we're talking about comparing that to some other product that would have its own Faraday coefficient. Moles product generated divided by theoretical moles product generated. So we could say this is like actual, actual mole product generated, and the denominator is theoretical mole product generated from electrons consumed. And it's usually a, a percentage, so then we can multiply this by 100%. So you can see this is basically an electron yield. It's an actual number divided by a theoretical number times 100%. This is just like in organic chemistry or, or any other type of chemistry where you have a product yield, um, but usually we think about that in terms of uh, stoichiometry. We don't think about that in terms of the electrons consumed. So I'll give you an example at the end of this video of how these are, are, are different, um, but let's just start with a, a very simple uh, run through of how this works. So uh, this top part, the numerator, where do you get this from? You have to detect it, right? This is any analytical technique you could get this from. So this could be GC, gas uh, chromatography. This could be um, you know, mass spec, NMR, any way, a colorimetric essay, any way that you're gonna figure out how many moles of product you actually produced in your electrochemical cell, okay, in your electrochemical reaction. What about this uh, other part? This other part you're gonna get from your coulometry. coulometry which is just a measure of charge. Okay, so as an example, if you're doing, let's say, chronoampiometry, Remember, chronoampiometry is you're holding a voltage constant and measuring the current over time. So this is just, you could get cool, you can measure charge from any electrochemical technique, but let's say we do chronoampiometry. Um, this would be then current on the y-axis. Let's say it's in amps. Let's say we had a value of one over 60 seconds, this is time on the x-axis. What we do in this case is, well, we know an amp is a coulomb per second, and so if we multiply coulomb per second times seconds, we're gonna get coulombs. Coulombs is the unit of charge, which is what we want. So in other words, if we take the area under this rectangle, the area under the curve, we integrate, okay, current, with respect to time, okay, um, we would get, all right, um, we, we would get our charge, okay? So uh, the way that this works then is in this case, this example, we have one amp, we times it by 60 seconds, that gets us 60 coulombs. And then we could, you know, another way to write this generically is Q charge equals um, I times T, okay, or the integral, right, if we have a varying I. Um, and so now we have 60 coulombs, and we just use Faraday's constant, 96485 coulombs per mole of electrons. 
All right. So you can see what happened there is we did Q um, divided by F. Okay. But then what we have to do also is we have to figure out how many moles of electrons we generate. We, we actually have product we generate. This is just electrons. We need moles products generated from electrons consumed. So let's say this was hydrogen gas, which is an example. We know that the balanced reaction for that is two electrons plus two protons goes to hydrogen gas. So for every two moles of electrons, we get one mole product. So in this case, we need two moles of electrons goes to one mole hydrogen gas. So you can see we took the charge, we divide by Faraday's constant, then we divide by N, the stoichiometry of the reaction, or sometimes people will put this as Z. Okay, so Z is um, number of electrons per mole product generated that we care about. And so putting this all together, now you have uh, actual moles products generated. We could call that N, you know, N product, or just N, and define that as huh, number of moles product detected by your analytical technique, right? And so um, now we have N, divided by Q, divided by ZF. Okay, so you get ZFN over Q times 100%. And that equals your Faraday coefficients. So sometimes people will write it like this. I don't see really a value of you know, going through this. I just figure out the number of moles generated, and then I convert the number of charge to the number of products that would be generated theoretically. It's an actual versus theoretical yield, just like any yield is. It's a product yield on an electron basis. Okay. So we'll talk about in the next video um, how this is different from a typical yield that you talk about in general chemistry or organic chemistry where it's based on stoichiometry and i'll also have another video on why the faraday efficiency might be less than 100 percent. what does that mean and what does it mean if the faraday efficiency is greater than 100 percent? what could be going on to get you those values so those will be two different videos